All right, welcome back. So we just did local exec. And so let's take a look at remote exec. So in our documentation, we'll just go down one. And here we have an example. I want something a little bit more simple than this. Um, so what I'll do is just kind of grab this code here and we'll just kind of tweak it. Uh, so we'll go down below. We don't need both local and remote here. So I'll go up here and um, I'm just gonna take this command here, okay? And paste it on in here, but I wanna make sure that it actually goes somewhere that I can find it. So I'm actually gonna just SSH, SSH into the server. We'll just hit up until we find that SSH command we had earlier, there we go. Just because I can't remember the root directory here. So we'll say PWD and I think that we can get it to to put it in here. I don't know what this is going to execute like in as what type of user. I'm hoping that it will execute as the EC2 user. If it doesn't, I don't know how we're gonna find this file or the, the command that it's gonna run here. But what I'm gonna do is put in home EC2 user and uh, we will have the echo command in here. And we'll just actually copy this wholesale, okay. And I'm hoping that this will place it where we want it to go. If not, like, it's not a big deal. It's just the fact that uh, it'd be nice to just be able to easily see that. Uh, local, exact, and remote are a little bit different. So this one takes just a command, and this one can take multiple inline commands or a bunch of other stuff. You can read the docs on it. It's all covered in the lecture content. Um, so this should do the same thing. This one says AWS instance web private IP address. So I don't think self is gonna work in the way that we expect it to here. Uh, it might, it should actually, yeah. So let's give this a go and see if that will work. Um, to do this, because it, like from the perspective of Terraform, nothing has changed in terms of the infrastructure. So we're gonna have to do a, uh, a replace. So we'll do Terraform, um, apply, replace, and then we'll have to give it the resource addressing name. So let's AWS instance dot my server. And I got to type that right if I want that to work. Terraform. Oh, you know what? It's because I'm logged in the server. Common problem I have here. Replace equals it was instance my server. Enter. And so I'm just hoping that this is going to work. Actually, you know what? I'm going to stop that before it happens because we're missing the E there. It doesn't matter because I would have had to confirm that action. So I guess I didn't have to panic there. It's still wrong. <laughs> I got to put a forward slash on that. So we'll just hit up again. And we'll try this one more time. This time I think I got it. We'll say yes. And I'll see you back here when it's done provisioning. We'll SSH the server and see if we can see that file. But maybe like the best we'll get is just the command that it's executed, okay? All right, so we didn't have much luck here. Um, it says missing configure, uh, connection configuration for provisioner. So probably what we need is we might need to specify a connection. Let me just see here. So provisioner in invokes a script, a remote resource. This can be used as etc. The example just shows this, right? And so down below, missing connection configuration. So I'm thinking what it is, is that it just wants the connection information. So there's like a connection block for provisioners. So we will go and type in Terraform connection block. Wasn't planning on showing this uh, right away, but if this is what it requires, then we will uh, provide it that. It's not a big deal. So I just want one for SSH. I really wish they just had, oh, they do right there. There's an example. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab this. Actually, this probably tells us where it would execute, which is kind of the question we had there before. Um, this does not use root first, so it's gonna be EC2 user, but there's no password. Okay, let's go down below here. So the address of the resource to connect to. So I would assume that's just the IP address. So we just say um, self dot private IP. Actually, that'd be public IP, sorry, public IP. Uh, there is no password. So we'll have to pass the private key. So that's how we're going to do it. So we will take that out here. Private key. 
the contents of the SSH key, this can be loaded from a file on disk using the file function. So we've done that once before with file. And we actually did it in this, this one, I believe. Oops. I'm trying to search in this file here. There we go. So I'm just going to go down below here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, paste that in there. Whoops. You know, this, uh, this VS Code doesn't always work how I want it to. So let's say private, I, um, private key. Oh, sorry. This is template file, private key. I mean, it's not a template file. It's just a file. I don't know if we need to really assign it to data. I'm going to go Google this. I'll be back in a sec. All right, so I took a look here, and it seems like it's very simple. It's just something like that. That's what I was wondering, that maybe we don't have to do a data source there. Um, so what I'm just going to do here is just paste that in there like that. And we will go down below to our connection here. And this is going to be at the root Terraform. Terraform. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let me just go double check if there's any other parameters we're missing. Uh, the host, the address used to connect to the resource required. The other one didn't have it. I'm surprised that, uh, now I'm kind of like wondering if this is going to work because that other one didn't have the host, so maybe it's old. The path to use for the script, um, user type host. Yes, this all looks fine. There's really not that much to type in here. So I think that we're all good to go. And I think that this connection block is in the right area. It's with the provisioner. So let's pull the trigger and see what happens. So we'll try another replace here. Okay. Say yes. Hopefully we're just lucky here. So yeah, that kind of answers the question of what it would, what it would use. It would be EC2 user there, so. All right, so I'll be back here if we run into any errors, okay? All right, welcome back. So uh, looks like it finished here and it did establish a remote connection. It didn't say that it failed, it said that it connected and it probably executed that command that we were expecting here. It's not saying that it failed in any way. So let's go ahead and log in and see if we can see it. If we don't, that's not a big deal. We don't have to uh, really dwell on this to make sure it's perfect. More so important that we just kind of go through the motions so that we understand what this is. Hey, the file is there. Look at that. So we can open it up. Let's see if it's there. Perfect. Okay, so that is a remote exec. And so then we can move on to, I suppose, uh, transferring files, okay?